All right, good afternoon, family. It's 1218. I'm going to go ahead and get started with this lesson. This is lesson three of Hunger and Thirst for Righteousness. Uh, the title of this lesson is The Awakening of a Bond Servant. Okay. And so this is going to be part one. It's going to be, I'm going to do two parts with this one um, simply because I think that learning about the awakening of a bond servant is, is very important, not only for you and understanding if he is calling you, um, but also for you to not fool yourself on him being calling you, but also for you to not be fooled on other people who've been called by God. And so this is, this is just a very important topic to understand the trueness of what it really means to be a bond servant, how God wakes up those who are bond servants, how he talks to them, the type of message he gives. Um, and this is a, a great time for this. Like it's really right on time with, uh, with the, the uh, class that we're doing. I'm going through the Bible in a certain way that God instructed me to do it. And it's so right on point because he really told me I should teach this class called Hunger and Thirst for Righteousness and, and started with First Samuel. And here we are, First Samuel. Here we have Samuel who was really the, uh, I'm going to say outside of Moses, Moses was kind of a, uh, I'm going to say that Moses had a, a, a bigger place than just a normal uh, prophet or, or, or bond servant. Like he was a deliverer for real. And so, but this is the first like bond servant we're really seeing for real right now in the Bible is Samuel. And so let's go ahead and get into what this really means to be a bond servant. Uh, we'll get into what it really looks like to be, a, um, um, to be um, woken up as a bond servant. Um, today we'll talk about these two things. Okay is the reality of what it looks like to be awoken as a bond servant, but also we'll be talking about um, the types of visions and types of dreams that you will receive as a bond servant. We'll talk about that today, okay? And so let's get into that and we'll go in and get going. I won't try to keep you too long. First Samuel 3, 2 to 4 says, it happened at that time as Eli was lying down in his place. Now, now his eyesight had begun to grow dim and he could not see well. And the lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was, that the Lord called Samuel and he said, here I am. And so here's Samuel who's laying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Uh, and the, the, the Lord called Samuel and he said, here I am. Okay, here I am. Let's keep talking. Then he ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. And he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down, the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he answered, I did not call my son, lie down again. And so understanding in this situation, something that's really beautiful and very true, is, this, is, is that Samuel is hearing the voice of God. Now, the other people who are with him, they're also in the temple. You have to understand this. Eli's in the temple. His other sons are in the, in the temple. But there's only one person actually hearing the voice of God, and that's Samuel. And this is a very great, uh, very great thing to, to understand because, you know, there may be, be many people who work in the church, many people who work in the temple, many people who work in the synagogue, but it ain't everybody who's hearing vo God's voice directly. And that's just the truth. And so here he is. He's calling him. He's calling him by his name, Samuel. So Samuel rose, went to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. He answered, I did not call my son. Lie down again. And then he says, so now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor had the word of the Lord, um, not, not yet the Lord, not, okay, no, nor had the word of the Lord yet been revealed to him. So the Lord called Samuel again for the third time. He arose. Now, let me go back real quick. Now, had the word of the Lord yet, now had the word, the word of the Lord yet been revealed to him. Sorry, the tongue twister. So the Lord called Samuel again for the third time. He arose and went to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. So it says, now I'm going to read this one more time in the beginning. I think this is very important. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor had the word of the Lord yet been revealed to him. I want you all to understand something. Actually, you know what? I, I wish I put this scripture on here in the beginning of 1 Samuel 3. In the beginning of 1 Samuel 3, it literally says that, that the, the Samuel was, was ministering to, to, uh, to the Lord before Eli. Now, that scripture is kind of hard to understand, but what it really means is this. You understand that, that Samuel did not know the word of God. He didn't have the word of the Lord. It had been revealed to him, and he did not know the Lord, but he was speaking uh, of someone that knows the Lord. He's speaking in, 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 in truth, yet he did not know the Lord. Now, that is a, that is a very, very, I'm, I'm trying to tell you, that's something that's very, 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 very good and something very real to understand about a bond servant of God. 
is even before they've been called, before they've been called, they have this word that's filled with faith and this, and this love. Although they don't know where they got it from, they're just speaking from their heart. He, Samuel did not yet know the Lord, but in 1 Samuel 3, 1, it says that he was ministering to the Lord before Eli. So he was literally ministering truth. He was telling the truth, but he did not know the Lord, nor had his word been revealed to him. And you understand something, that people who are called to follow the Lord, they, 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 it, 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 we're going to talk about Paul in a second. But even before Paul was called by the Lord, he had already been, uh, uh, his heart had already been drawn towards the law of God and God's ways and God, 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 God. He didn't know Lord. He didn't know the Lord. He didn't have the word of the Lord hadn't been revealed to him. He didn't really know the truth, but he was speaking in truth and this love already. And so the Lord calls Sam again. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm right now we're talking about the awakening of a bond servant. And this is something you will truly see in your life as you if you have been awakened as a bond servant. I'm telling you the truth. This is something that happens to me often in my life. I see memories on my Facebook and stuff of things I said when I was 15, 14, uh, 20, 21, 18. And I'm like, I didn't even know the word of God yet. But I was saying these things was conceptually true to the word of God. And but it's the thing is that if you are a bond servant, I'm trying to tell you, he made you to tell the truth. So your heart's always has always inclined toward the truth. And then when you read the truth, you knew immediately that it was the truth because it was already placed inside of you. And so now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor had the word of the Lord yet been revealed to him. So the Lord called Samuel again for the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, here I am. You called me. Then Eli discerned that the Lord was calling the boy. Now, this is the thing. Eli discerned that the Lord was calling the boy, yet he was not the bond servant who was called to God, but he had the discernment to see that it was God. Now, this is something that 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 that, that I'm is I'm not gonna say is, is I'm not gonna say not rare, but many people of God sh uh, can, should have this discernment, especially if you believe in Jesus Christ. You may not be called to speak the truth, you may not be called to be a bond servant. But you should be able to discern if God is talking to somebody or not. And that's something that Eli had within him. He could discern that. He said, you know what? He said, no, God is talking to you. It ain't a human being. It's not me. It's not yourself. It's God. And so then, but that's sometimes as a bond servant, we need that. You need somebody in your life that can see, that can tell you clearly, no, God is talking to you. It's, it's not your imagination. It's not people. It, this is not me. This is God talking to you. Now, many people who are bond servants, I'm trying to tell you, you, we need that person in our life to tell us that. That it's, we're not crazy. It's not my thoughts. It's not a, it's not a person that's telling me this. It's, it's truly God. I'm trying to tell you this. I, 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 have, I was just talking to uh, my, uh, my son's mom about this yesterday, and I was telling her, like, you know, when I was going through this and I was going through some things, like, she was the first person to really tell me, like, listen, God is talking to you. Do what he's telling you to do. The first person to tell me, like, no, listen, God's talking to you. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about your son. Do what God is telling you to do. I'm trying to tell you that as a bond servant, we all need somebody with that type of discernment in our lives and has that type of confidence in us in our lives to see clearly that God is talking to you. Listen to him. That's who Eli was to Samuel. God was talking to him. And Eli said, listen to him. Now, 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 now the wrong people in your life, you're going to come to them and tell them this voice is talking, this voice is talking, this voice is talking to me. And they're they going to call you crazy. They're going to tell you, now go back to sleep. Ain't nobody talking to you. But this person who can see clearly, this person who actually God called Eli to be in that position at that time to give a sin with the confidence to know that God was talking to him. We all need an Eli in our lives for real. And that's the truth. And Eli said to Samuel, go lie down and shall be if he calls you that you shall say to him, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So he tells him, he gives him the instruction that like, listen, now, now this is the thing is that Eli has not been called, was not called like this. Eli was not chosen to be a bond servant, to be this servant of God. He was not chosen in that way. But you know what? He did know that, hey, if you're being called and you're being talked to like this, talk back to him in this way. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. 
So Samuel went and laid down his place. Some of us don't understand, even as bond servants, he places people in your life. It, they may not be called to be bond servants, but he places people in your life to give you specific direction from him of how to accept your servitude to him. So then he said, so Samuel went and laid down in his place. Let's keep going. Then the Lord came and stood and called, um, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. The Lord said to Samuel, behold, I'm about to do a thing in Israel in which both ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. And that day I will carry out, I, I will carry out against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I'm about to judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knew. Because his sons brought a curse on themselves and he did not rebuke them. Therefore, I have sworn to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house should not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. And so this is the truth. This is the truth. And this is the, this is the scary thing for real, right? Is that the same person that has aided Samuel in, in waking up to God, God then tells him, tell the person that aided you in waking up that I'm pronouncing death on his life and on his household. Now, this is the, I'm, trying, I'm sorry, but this is the scary thing for real about being a bond servant. If you really want to be one, you got to carry out messages that aren't easy to tell. And I'm trying to tell you this. This is one of the hardest things in the world. What, what do you do when the person who helped you wake up to God is the person that God is telling you to tell that they will not, they will surely not see light? What do you do? What well, you got to tell them? And so this is the thing about this, that people, everybody wants to be a prophet. Everybody wants to be a bond servant. Everybody wants to be these things. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because what happens when you got to tell your dad that he's, he's going to die in a lake of fire? What happens when you got to tell your cousin that, that they're going to go to hell? What happens when you got to tell your, 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 your spouse that, listen, you ain't never going to see heaven? You ain't never going to see. What, what are you going to do? Do you y'all want the title? Y'all want all that stuff, but you don't understand how hard of a message you have to give people all the time. And and he don't give you messages for people to like you. He doesn't. And so here he is. He's talking. And he's telling Samuel, like, listen, you're you gotta go tell the tell Eli that his house is going is uh, uh is going to fall. I'm going I'm going to uh, that all the iniquity of Eli's house should not be atoned for by sacrifice. That some there's nothing they can do. There's nothing they can do to atone for what they've done in my eyes. There's nothing they can do. The same person that helped him wake up, he now has to tell that you are going to die. And so let's keep going. 1 Samuel 3, 15 and 19. So Samuel lay down until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. But Samuel was afraid to tell his vision to Eli. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he and this is the funny thing, okay? Well, this is not the funny thing. But this is the hard thing, right? Is that here we are. Eli has been his father to, to Samuel, right? He's the one who's helped him wake up. And actually, Eli is, is, is really joyful because he's, he's been seeing this in Samuel. Eli is the one who saw that Samuel was, was born to minister to God. Like, he saw it. 1 Samuel 3, 1. He saw it. And so he's actually kind of joyful when he understands that, oh, you're being talked to by God. Finally, I've been knowing it's going to happen in your life. Samuel, my son. And then here goes Samuel. He says, here I am. And he said, what is the word that he spoke to you? Please do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also. If you hide anything from me of all the words that he spoke to you. And so this is what uh, Eli knows. He's like, no, as a bond servant of God, you got to tell the truth. And he's like, bro, even if it's bad, whatever it is, do not hide the word from me. I want to know. And so Eli really is a great mentor to Samuel, honestly, even though he's about to give him this bad news. And this is the thing also that the Lord was saying about Eli is that it wasn't even about Eli's Eli's death was not pronounced because of his wickedness. Eli's death was pronounced because he wouldn't rebuke the wickedness of his sons. And so this is the reality of God, too, is that if he's called you to speak up, if he's called you to, as a father, first of all, you're called to speak up over your children and your, and your lineage. If you are not speaking up, 
I'm sorry, but you're just as wicked in God's eyes as the wicked. And that's literally what he tells Ezekiel. He literally tells him, like, you know, say that they're, they're being wicked, and I tell you to go tell them this message, and you don't tell them. He said, well, they'll die in their sins, and the blood will be on your hands. That's why the blood is on Eli's hands right now. But he says that they're doing wickedness, and you tell them, and they don't listen. Well, then you're free. You're free, and you're liberated, but they will die in their sins. And so the reality is this is that Eli could have wiped his hands clean if he just told his sons the truth, and he rebuked them, but he didn't. He enabled them. And I'm trying to tell you this is the truth is that some of y'all really have been understand that Jesus is saying, you know, we should have love, we should have faith, but faith, but love is not enabling. Love is, is in discipline and correction. This is what the Lord literally says in Revelation. He says, I correct and discipline everyone I love. And he's the only one that gives true love. So you understand if you're not disciplined and correcting, you're not giving true love and the blood is on your hands. The blood's on your hands. And so it says, so Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And he says, and he said, and this, this uh, honestly, this is honestly how you know that Eli is a great mentor. And he also has this great faith in God. And he knew that, that Samuel was called. And that's the thing is that even though he knew Samuel was called, he knew that God was talking to him. But this, this is really how Eli was, was, was still great for real, is that whatever came from the Lord to Samuel, he was willing to accept. He said, is the Lord, let him do what seems good to him. He's like, no, I know God is talking to you. The Lord is telling you my house is going to be pronounced to death. Well, you know what? It's the Lord. It's the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. Thus Samuel grew and Lord was with him and let none of his words fail. And I, I just think that this is really important, though, like the, the, the mentorship of Eli, because him, I'm trying to tell you this. Him pushing Samuel to accept his calling. And then after accepting his calling, Samuel had nothing but harsh words from him. And he accepted the words that came from him. Now, some of y'all tell somebody they're called. And when once they're called, they have bad things to tell you from God. And you say, nah, he didn't tell you that. Well, this was the faith of Eli. And this is actually the goodness of Eli. He saw that God was good. And he knew it. And some of y'all go, some of y'all know the Lord calls somebody, but then once they tell you what they said, they're like, nah, he didn't call you. No, you knew they was called and you just don't like the words that the Lord had to say to you. And so this is kind of a general outline that, that, that uh, when it came to Samuel and Eli, uh, really, really was of him being awoken, what it looked like being called in his sleep. He's speaking to him as he's asleep. And so you understand, like, uh, uh, many, many bond servants have experienced this. I, 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 honest to God, I, I had um, uh, uh, um, a situation in my life one time, which I'll testify real quick about that, is one time I, I was taking a nap on the couch, right? And I kind of fell into this deep sleep really quickly. And I find myself in this, like, diamond light zone. And as I'm in this diamond light zone, I just hear a voice talking to me. And he's, and he's asking me a question. And he's literally saying to me, what purifies better, water or fire? And then he says again, what purifies better, water or fire? What purifies better, water or fire? And that's the thing about God is that as he speaks to his bond servants, he really speaks clearly to you in your sleep, in your slumber. And so we'll, we'll get into this in a second, a little bit more about it. But this is a great overview of what it looks like to wake up as a bond servant. As, as he calls you in your sleep, he's talking to you. He's calling you by name. He's not even talking to you about your life. You're, he's not talking to you about that. He's talking to you about the truth. And so, um, really great. Let's get into this real quick. And so I want, I want to get into the reality of bond servants today, okay? Because some of y'all are reading this and you're like, well, this is a servant. This is the Old Testament. No, we have servitude being going on right now and people have to get woken up as servants let's talk about this revelation 11 18 and the and the nations were in, enraged and your wrath came and the time came for the dead to be judged and the time and the time to reward your bond servants the prophets and the saints and those who fear your name the small and the great and to destroy those who destroy the earth okay so the reason why i'm putting this on here is i'm, I'm trying to help you understand what it means to be a bond servant okay and so it says the time to re reward your bond servants, the prophets and the saints. As you understand, as a bond servant, as a bond servant, the bond, your bond servants, 
the prophets and the saints. You understand, as a bond servant, you are automatically a prophet if you're a bond servant. Now, you have to understand those two things go hand in hand. And what also goes hand in hand is being a bond servant and being a saint. And so I'm giving you that so you understand what it really, because you're going to read, if you're, if y'all are really reading the Bible and you're reading the New Testament, you're going to read about being a bond servant a lot. You have to understand what that really means and, and why it really matters. So let's keep going real quick. And so also to understand is, as a bond servant and a prophet, they're, they're, those are equal in, in, not equal, but I would say that every bond servant is a prophet. Now, is every prophet a bond servant? You know, I'm not, I can't, I'm not at liberty I don't, I don't have the answer to that. I, uh, um, I, if I inquire the Lord right now and from what he's told me, I would say no, that every prophet is not a bond servant, but every bond servant is a prophet, though. And so let's keep going. Numbers 12, 6, it says, um, he said, hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, shall make myself known to him in a vision. I shall speak with him in a dream. I shall speak with him in a dream. I will make himself, I will make myself known to him in a vision. I shall speak with him in a dream. I shall speak. I shall speak with him in a dream. What was Samuel just, just, he was just um, experiencing this. He was being spoken with in a dream. And so you understand that it, it is a bond servant. He talks to you. In your dreams. And it's the thing is that, no, it's, it's not in, it's not even in symbolism in parable form. No, he talks to you. Talks to you. I will speak with him in a dream. Speak. That means he opened his mouth. He's speaking with him in a dream. And so he says, I shall make myself known to him in a vision. So you understand that these are two things that are very, um, seeing visions and, and yet also being spoken with directly by God in a dream or two things that all that if you're a prophet, which we also just talk about being a bond servant and prophet and go hand in hand, you're going to receive. He's going to speak with you directly in a dream. You're going to hear him talk to you in a dream. He's going to make himself known to him in a vision. He's going to give you a vision to where it's, it's, it's known. Like, like he's going to make God know. Like, he's going to give you a vision to where, it, 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 like, no, there's no, there's nothing else for me to believe in my life but that God is real and that heaven exists. Like, he's not going to, like, literally, he's going to, it's going to be a vision that no, make myself known to him. When you know something, it don't leave you. He said, no, I'm going to make it known to him where, like, no, you can't deny who I am and that I'm real. Let's keep going. And this, this goes hand in hand perfectly with Revelation. So Revelation 1, uh, 1 to 3 says, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his bond servants. So the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his bond servants. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him. So the revelation that Jesus Christ owned, that Jesus Christ had, this, this book of Revelation that was in the possession of Jesus, God gave Jesus the this these revelation this book of revelation he gave it to Jesus to show his bond servants so he gave the he gave this this the, these revelations if you look through revelation it was at 22 chapters he gave this book of revelation to Jesus to show for Jesus to show his bond servants so he gave it to Jesus for Jesus to show his bond servants the things which must soon take place. So this also is what's true is that you understand that everything that he gives, he is giving um, his bond servants things that are, are, are going to take place. He's not giving you things that are just uh, a, a, a futile and, and, and this, the, these, these uh, parables. No, he's giving you real things that are going to take place. And he's sitting communicated by his angel to his bond servant John. So he understands. We'll, we'll talk about this in a second. But he, he used his angels communicate the revelation from Jesus Christ to the bond servant. And so in this case, it was John by his angels, by his angel to his bond servant John, who testified to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ and to all that he saw. Blessed is he who reads, um, uh, who reads and those who hear the words of the prophecy and heed the things which are written in it for the time is near. Okay. And so Jesus gave, Jesus gave John the full, the full thing. Like Jesus gave John the, like, he, like the full revelation of Jesus. 
he gave to John. Now you understand this is that a, a bond servant is not going to receive a revelation that's not already written in Revelations. I don't think y'all understand that. Like Revelation is all divine revelation from the beginning of time to the end of time. You're not going to find a, a vision, a revelation at this point in time since Jesus has come um, that's true to his will and his plan that's not going to coincide with revelation. It's, it's not possible. And so that's important. Let's keep going. Revelation 22, 6 says, and he said to me, these words are faithful and true. And the Lord, the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets sent his angel to show his bond service of things which must soon take place. So this is what I was just the same thing. And this is what's crazy. This is Revelation 22. It's the last chapter. He's saying the same thing that's in the first chapter. He's literally saying that, listen, these words are faithful and true. And the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent his angel to show his bond servants the things which must soon take place. So the Lord has sent his angel to show his bond servants. So you understand these visions that, that, that these bond servants receive come straight from, from God through angels. His angel brings the vision to the man. So I'm trying to help you understand what it, what it means to wake up as a bond servant. Like he says, I'll speak through a dream or a vision. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. It, 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 it takes a truly huge divine experience to slap and wake up a bond servant and say, hey, it's time. But let me keep going. I got a couple examples of that in a second. Revelation 7, 2 to 4. Now, why are we talking about bond servants right now? Why? Because Revelation talks about it because it's important. Like, it's very important. Like, you know, I think y'all understand how important, like, the bond servants of God are markers for the end of time. And so it says, Revelation 7, 2 to 4, And I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun, having the seal of the living God. And he cried out with the loud voice of the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the bond servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. 144,000 bond servants. And so we have to understand this is true. This, and this the thing is that, you know, you, you may love your, your, your preacher. You may love your deacon. You may love your bishop. You may love all people. But I'm trying to tell you the truth. It's only going to be 144,000 true bond servants of God to, to, to do his will uh, from the passing of Jesus Christ to the end of the world. And that's just the truth. And so why are we talking about this? Because uh, um, this is what God sent me to do. If I'm being completely honest with you, he sought me to seek out uh, uh, these 144,000 people and help them wake up in their life. This is what he told me to do. And so because 144,000 is so important, but I'm teaching this today because I really want you to understand if you're listening to this and you haven't listened to it and you've you've experienced things like that. Well, well, understand something real quick. You got to accept your calling because it's very important that these people rise up in this life. It's only 144,000 of true people who are meant to, to tell the truth of the word of God for real. And so um, that's a little bit more about why bond servant and servitude is so important to, to God's plan for real. But I want to talk to you about this real quick because this is how many people get deceived on bond servants, okay? And so it says, Jeremiah, because he did say that he will talk to them in the dream. He said he'll talk to them in the dream, right? Talk to them, which means it's gonna, your, his voice is going to come to you in a dream, right? And then he also says that um, not only does he say that, that he's going to talk to them in a dream, he's going to show them a vision. Well, in Jeremiah 23 is the greatest chapter for discernment on true bond servitude and um, false bond servitude, okay? And so it says, thus is the Lord of hosts. Do not listen to the words of the prophets who are prophesying to you. They're leading you into futility. They speak a vision of their own imagination, not from the mouth of the Lord. They keep saying to those who despise me, the Lord has said, you will have peace. And as for everyone who walks in the stubbornness of his own heart, they say calamity will not come upon you. But who, but who has stood in the counsel of the Lord that he should see and hear his word? Who has given heed to his word and listened? And so this is something we have to understand. There's a couple things about this, okay? 
It says they speak a vision of their own imagination. Do you know how if someone's received a vision from the Lord that is not from their own imagination? It will coincide with revelation. Revelation is like there, there are no other revelations from God to give to men. There are no more. If you that's the thing is that if you've not read Revelation, well, you know, you don't even you have no clue. You have no clue. And so that's the thing is that he's literally given us all visions, all um proclamations, all um of his plan from the beginning to end. But the reality is that his bond servants are going to receive visions that coincide with Revelation and not from the futility of their own mind. His, their, their visions will never be, um, will never be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Their visions will never be, tra will never transgress the words of Christ. And that's the thing is that many people have these visions and then you'll say, this is what he says right here. They keep saying to those who despise me, the Lord has said, you will have peace. Uh, that's, that's not the voice of God. It, it's not the voice of God. The voice, first of all, the Lord call, called his bond servants to call out the evils of the world and tell people to repent and then tell them what's to come from their repentance. And, and, I, you ain't walking up to nobody and just saying you will have peace. Because you ain't going to have no peace if you ain't making a change. And it's for everyone who walks in the stubbornness of their own heart that say calamity will not come upon you. And that's another thing too about uh, uh, um, false bond servants is like, I'm trying to tell you the truth. Well, you know what the Lord is trying to tell you? If someone is coming up to you with a message from him and it sounds like flowers and roses, they're lying and they're not a bond servant and they did not receive it from God. The two examples he gives, he says, you will have peace. And the other one, he says, calamity will not come upon you. If you are telling people that, oh, your life's going to go great. Oh, this is going to happen in, in four years. Oh, this is going to happen in three years. Oh, 18 months. Oh, all these things. They're lying. Uh, lying uh, lying and so it says but who has stood in the counsel of the lord that he should see and hear his word who has given heed to his word and listened who's done that and so let's go into this i'm gonna, we're gonna go to my man daniel right here we're almost done with this lesson almost done with this lesson we're gonna go to my man daniel right here because my man daniel received true visions from god and so let's talk about what it really looks like Let's talk about what it really looks like when you receive a vision from the Lord. Daniel 7.15, as for me, Daniel, my spirit was distressed within me and the visions in my mind kept alarming me. The Lord, listen, if you get a vision from the Lord, you are going to, listen, listen. I don't think y'all understand. Uh, first of all, I don't think you understand how mighty God is for real in, in, in the uh, 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 you see this fleshly world. I don't think you understand how shocking it is to see something eternal and angelic for real. My spirit was distressed within me and the visions in my mind kept alarming me. Some of y'all get a dream and like, oh, I just want to tell the world about my dream. I'm my dream. I'm my, and then, like, <laughs> it wasn't from God. If that's how you feel about it, because I'm trying to tell you the truth. If it's from God, you're going to be shaken up. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was distressed within me, and the visions in my mind kept alarming me. I, I, I tell this 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 um, I tell this um story every once in a while about what happened to me when I died and what I saw. Do you not know it took me eight years to tell somebody what I saw? Eight years. Eight years. It ain't easy receiving something from God. I don't think y'all understand that. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was distressed within me and the visions in my mind kept alarming me. Uh, Daniel, I feel you. I, I de And that's the thing is that the Lord said he sends distress on men because they've sinned against the Lord. But this is also true is that when you receive a, um, a, 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 um, a, a true vision from God, uh, uh, listen, listen, nobody's faith is great enough to receive a vision from God when they first get it. You gonna be distressed because you sinned against the Lord a little bit because your faith wasn't wasn't great enough. You don't have enough love for God for what you saw for real, but you gotta up it and stay with it and go and grow through it. And so it says, my spirit was distressed within me, and the visions in my mind kept alarming me. It is so like people. I don't like. I just don't think people understand that if you're really receiving revelation from God, if you really receive um, 
if you're receiving revelation from God, you're receiving vision from God, if he's talking to you, bro, it is not easy. It's not easy to stomach. It's not easy to have within yourself. It's, it's not easy at all. And the visions in my mind kept alarming me. Let's keep going real quick. Daniel 7, 28 says, at this point, the revelation ended. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts were greatly alarming me and my face grew pale, but I kept the matter to myself. I don't think some of y'all really understand what it's like having a, a revelation from God. My thoughts were greatly alarming me. Like, do you know how hard that is to have a vision from God, a revelation from God, a, 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 a true word from God? Your thoughts are greatly alarming me. You don't even want to, you don't even, your, your thoughts are alarming. Like, I, I don't even want to think no more. And my face grew pale. This man felt like he looked like he saw a ghost. And then he says, but I kept the matter to myself. I don't think y'all understand that when you have a true vision of a true vision, a true word from God, it ain't easy to just start saying stuff about. It's not easy but I kept the matter to myself. I kept the matter to myself. Three slides and we'll be out of here. So now we're going to go to our brother Paul real quick, who um, this is um, this is when he was Saul before he got uh, changed into Paul. But we're going to talk about how he got woken up, who he was a bond servant. Let's talk about this. So now Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked for letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, both men and women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem as he was traveling. It happened that as he was approaching Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him, and he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and it will be told you what you must do. A light from heaven flashed around him, and he fell to the ground and heard a voice. What did he say? I'm going to speak to him. What, what, did he, what did he do to, to Samuel? He called him by name. Samuel. Samuel. What did he do to Saul? Saul. Saul. Why are you persecuting me? And he said, Why, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and it will be told you what you must do. Acts 9, 7 and 9 says, the, women who travel with him, the men who traveled with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. Saul got up from the ground, and, and, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. And leading him by the hand, they brought him into Damascus, and he was there three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Okay, so it says this light took his sight, right? But you know what he did by will? Because uh, uh, it, it's 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 frightening, it's shocking, it's life changing to really receive a vision from God, to see God, to hear God. He neither ate nor drank for three days. For three days, he didn't eat or drink. Now, some of y'all get something from God and you just start uh, being a cheerleader and you just get happy and joyful. You didn't get nothing from God. Because if you got something from God, I promise you, it ain't, it ain't nothing to be joy. At first, you ain't going to have joy. And he says, and neither ate nor drank. For three days, this man didn't eat or drink. And so this is my last slide. This came from Job. Job, my man, my man Job speaks very well, very wisely. Job 7, 13 and 15, he says, If I say my bed will comfort me, my couch will ease my complaint, then you frighten me with dreams and terrify me by visions, so that my soul will choose suffocation, death, rather than my pains. Then you frighten me with dreams and terrify me by visions. I don't think y'all understand if you receive a dream or a vision from God, it's terrifying. It's hard to speak about it. You don't know where to start in telling the story. You might not eat for some days. 
You might not talk to somebody for some months. You might be filled with distress for years. It's not easy being a bond servant, but we have to understand what it truly means to wake up as a bond servant and understand it's not flowers and roses. And those who, those of you that are those people that are painting uh, visions from God and the word from God and, and, and speaking from God as flowers and roses, they are lying to you. And so that's the end of this talk. It was the awakening of a bond servant. I hope you can understand a little bit more what it means to be a bond servant, what it looks like to wake up as a bond servant and in what his messages are, are, are truly like. Um, part two next week, we're going to dive deeper into um, his messages that he gives bond servants. So we, we talked a little bit about that today, but we didn't really dive super deep into it. I got more to go into that. Okay. And so we'll do part two next week. I hope you got something good from that. You can text your prayer request at 317-891-4148. We'd love to go to prayer. We'd love to go to battle for you and send engine action to your life. And then next week, we, we will um, do a tithe and offering. So we encourage you to save 10%. You are the body of Christ, a walking testimony in his good news. We encourage you to save 10% and support your ministry in this life. We also encourage you to give 10%, okay? And so we encourage you to give 10% because he called his, um, his, um, his bond servants to keep their eyes on him and to give you a pure message from him. And so um, it's by your giving they're able to keep their eyes on Christ and give you a pure message. And so whether it be this ministry or the, ne or the next ministry, give your 10%. We would love for you to be a part of that program. And then lastly, we do give back. So what I do is I pull $3 a week from that cash app to ensure that God's work will continue through our ministry. The rest of the acquired money will be divided equally and redistributed to those that gave. And we'll be the first to bless you. And so that cash app is money sign Christ King Way. We'd love for you to be a part of that program. This was the awakening of a bond servant. I hope that you um, heard something good for you and yourself and understanding what it means to be a bond servant truly. Um, we will be, I'll be back on here Sunday at... I believe we'll be doing 8 a.m. this Sunday, okay? We'll be doing 8 a.m. for our Sunday sermon. Um, we'll love to have you there, and have a blessed day.